Hello, it's me, and I'm going to do a viewer question. So this comes from Dragon Redstone. Great name, by the way. Anyway, he sends me this picture here, and he says, Hey there, was just wondering, watching your 4x4 access tutorial from about three years ago, uh, since I was struggling to solve that last layer consistently. Um, I ran into parody that you didn't cover, and I'm struggling to fix it. And he says, on a normal 4x4, I would fix it with 2R, 2U, 2R, 2U, U, 2R, 2U, U. However, uh, that ends up swapping some centers on the sides, and I was wondering if you had a solution. And the answer is, yes, I do. And here's what's happening with this. So I, I got this uh, pretty much in the position that you can see that he's having. If you notice that this appears to be rotated by 90 degrees, and these two edges, uh, these two corners rather, appear to be swapped. So what happened with this and how do you fix it? So it obviously appears to be some kind of a parity problem, a 4x4 parity problem, as you reduced it to a 3x3 and you ended up with this. Well, the best way to, to approach that or to demonstrate it is, is a similar situation on a 4x4. This is pretty much that same situation. If you notice, this corner is in and uh, this corner is in. So these two corners are in. These two are flip-flopped, just like these two are flip-flopped. Uh, now, although you can't see it, this center is actually similarly rotated to this. Now, this is rotated 90 degrees, but it's not 90 degrees off because you don't have any specificity with the center rotation. Here you do. So, if this were just a 4x4 and not a super cube, you wouldn't notice it. You just see these two, um, these two were uh, flip flop just like this. So, to fix it on a regular 4x4, well, what you do is you'd have to get the corners in. So, this would uh, require uh, an adjacent corner swap, and that would be... Uh, yeah, that would be 2R U, 2R UI, 2R, UI D, 2R UI, 2R U, 2R, move this back. With these being swapped, you're free to go ahead and put these in. Um, uh, now the problem is when you corner swap, you also flip these two. So this is bringing out what the actual parity is. It's not a corner parity. There's actually no such thing as a corner parity because you never reduce the corners. This is an edge parity problem because you reduce the edges. Um, because you don't reduce the corners, there's no parity problem created out of that. So we can go ahead and do R D I R D R D I R D R I D I R D R I D I R D. I'm just flipping these corners up. Move this in place. R I D A R D R I D A R D. So all I did was I put the corners back in and I rotated them. And you can see the actual parity problem are these two. It's a parity problem because you reduced it through a three by three, but you can't solve it as a three by three. So now is when we have to do a slice move, and that is what I call the U R F algorithm. And what you do with that is you do two U, two R, two F then a 2U and a superficial 2U, then a 2F, 2R, 2U, and it swaps these two. Now, the reason why you can't do it exactly like that on this is because, well, when you swap these two, you cause a whole bunch of rotational problems with this uh, center and this center, but you didn't know it. Here you would. So what I would do to get out of something like this is when you see a problem like this, don't worry about the center. The center is actually not the problem. You're not going to get a 90 degree center uh, rotation parity with this because you don't have any equivalent pieces in these centers. You'll get this in something like the Master Megamorphics because in the Master Megamorphics you'll have center pieces here that are equivalent to center pieces here. And when you do that, by swapping them, you can get a 90 degree rotation. Here, when you see this, you think, well, this is not that kind of issue. There's no false equivalency of centers because there's no equivalent centers. So therefore, this is not the problem. And this is not the problem. The problem are your edges. But let's see which one and how we can get it back. So when you see this, don't worry about this unless you find an equivalent center here. Get these back in. So I'm going to do a corner swap first. So that's 2R U, 2R UI, 2R, UI D, 2R U I, 2R U, 2R, and this moves back. So you can see these are in, all these corners are in, uh, just like we had before. You had some center rotation here, but, uh, but don't actually worry about that. And these two got swapped, which we expected. Now let's go ahead and get this back in just for the sake of, um, you know, argument. So we're going to go ahead and rotate this back in. R-I, D-I, R, D, R-I, D-I, R, D, right? This is in. I'm going to move this in this direction here and do R-I, D I R D R I D I R D R I D I R D R I D I R 
D. Okay, so now you can see what the situation is. These two have to be exchanged. You see that this center is also a problem, and uh, could I just do the URF algorithm? So understand that this is where the true parity lie. It was not a parity here because you don't have equivalent pieces. So there's no equivalencies there. This is truly a parity that you're going to get out of here. It's a parity problem because you don't get this on a 3x3. Three three. If I were to try to do the URF as was stated here, here's what you're probably finding. You go 2U, 2R, 2F. 2u and then a superficial 2u, then a 2f, 2r, 2u, and you see that did rotate this back, but you just caused this to be rotated here. Now you actually have a choice, because with this rotation, um, with this rotation, this is now a 180 degree rotation. One, two. One, two. So this is rotated by 180 degrees. Now, to rotate this in, now that you have everything tucked in, this is just a 180 degree rotation. And this is uh, actually really easy. All this is is you do R U R I U five times, and that should fix it. So in this case, you do R U R I U, that's once. R U R I U, that's twice. R U R I U. Three times, R, U, R, I, U, that's four times, and R, U, R, I, U, that's five times, and done. So in your particular configuration, that's how you can fix that. So the first thing that you did is you got back everything on that side, not worrying about the center. You did your URF algorithm, and you ended up with one rotation out, and you just did that algorithm, and that should fix that. So that was really actually fairly simple in that it didn't require any new algorithms. But I did want to point this out. There is a way of swapping two edges. I think yours was, uh, say, here. Of swapping two edges without causing any other rotation um, with that. So to, uh, to swap these two without causing rotations, because if I did 2U, 2R, 2U, 2R, 2F, 2U, 2U, Two F, two R, two U. Um, you're going to see that it rotates this and it rotates that. So you had both of those rotations. So as long as these two are in sync, you aren't going to run into any trouble with that. Um, now, how can I rotate these without rotating these at all? So let's get this back. Two U, two R, two F, two U, two U, two F. 2R, 2U, you may find yourself in a situation that goes a little something like this. Like this. So in this situation, the situation that you had, this was rotated along with this. So by, by fixing it, it rotated this in conjunction with these two. It just rotated this, which you can easily get it um, rotated 180 degrees. But you may find yourself in a situation where these two are opposite and this is not rotated. In your situation, they were opposite and this was rotated. So you can do your URF algorithm, it'll rotate this along with these guys, but it'll also rotate this and easily get it back. But if you find that these are the only thing that's out, because you don't want these to rotate, the algorithm is a variation of the URF, and unfortunately it's the most uh, difficult of all the ones to remember of your standard algorithms. But it's based on URF. You're going to start off with a simple slice through the middle. So it's going to be uh, UI, and then do super superficial R, and then an FI, so you still get your components there, FI, and then just a superficial U, RI, F. Then you do a middle move of doing a, a middle slice with a U, and then D, and then finish it with FI, R, UI, and F, RI, and finish with a middle slice di. So when you do that, it'll flip these two without rotating these. And that served me very well with supercubes. So that's the answer of how to get out of the specific situation that you had, 
But if you have another situation where these centers are not coordinated with these edges and the edges are the only things that have to go in, you can use that algorithm. So that should guide you through any other issues that you have with this type of a puzzle. So I so hope that helped and thanks for watching.